Okay, so welcome to this video. In this video, what we're going to talk about is how to solve general quartic equations. Okay, right, so what I'm going to start off by doing is uh, just writing out the general form of a quartic equation, okay? Then what I'll do is I'll discuss our basic strategy, okay? And then we'll actually uh, see uh, how it is that you go about solving quartic equations. Okay, and we're going to see that we're going to really reduce the problem of solving uh, a quartic equation to solving a cubic equation, and then we'll rely on you uh, knowing Cardano's formula, the technique for uh, finding solutions to cubic equations. Okay, right. So firstly, let me just write out a general quartic equation. So a quartic equation is one where you have a degree 4 term. So x to the power of 4 plus ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d is equal to 0. And we're working in the number system of the complex numbers, one of the main number systems uh, that people study. So we're going to assume that all of these coefficients here, a, b, C and D are all elements of the complex numbers. Okay, and we know that because of the fundamental theorem of algebra, uh, that means that this equation is going to have four roots, basically. They might not necessarily be distinct, but it will have four roots uh, within uh, the complex numbers. Okay, so four solutions to this um, equation, basically. Okay, now you might be wondering why have I uh, not got uh, an arbitrary constant in front of the degree 4 term? Okay, well that's because any uh, quartic equation that does have some constant in front of the degree 4 term can just be reduced down to a quartic of this form simply by dividing through by uh, that um, arbitrary constant that you've got in front of the degree 4 term and therefore can be turned into an equation of this form. So really this is the general form of a quartic equation. So all um, quartic equations uh, are captured in this structure here basically, okay, where we've got these four variables a, b, c and d which can be any complex numbers you can dream up. Okay, right. So let me outline firstly the, what we're going to do to try and solve this. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to change this. We're going to change it into an associated equation of this form, okay? y to the power of 4 plus py squared plus qy plus r is equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to get from our arbitrary quartic equation here an associated quartic equation in this new variable y which has no degree 3 term or rather the coefficient of the third degree term is equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to somehow find you an associated equation of this form. Then I'm going to find the solutions to this equation. I'll find the four roots of this equation, this associated equation, and then I claim that from uh, the roots of this associated equation, I can work backwards and get the roots of my original equation. So the first thing I'm going to tell you about is how am I going to turn my quartic equation here into a quartic equation where we have no uh, degree free term, and then we'll do how we can find the solutions of the degree free term. So basically, the way that you do this is you rewrite your quartic equation here in terms of powers of x plus a over 4. Okay, so let me just talk you through this in a little bit more detail. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this quartic equation here in terms of these powers of x plus a over 4. So we'll start off with x plus a over 4 to the power of 4. Let's just expand this out with the binomial expansion. So we'll get x to the power of 4, okay, then we'll get plus 4 Okay, which is just uh, 4 choose 1. Okay, uh, 4 choose 1 times a over 4 to the power of 1, and then x to the power of 3. Then we'll get plus 6, which is 4 choose 2, uh, times a over 4 squared times x squared. Okay, uh, then what we'll get is plus uh, 4, which is 4 choose 3, a over 4 to the power of 3 times x, and then finally just plus 4 choose 4, which is just 1, over a to the power of 4 to the power of 4. Uh, sorry, a over 4 to the power of 4. Okay, right. Uh, so now let's just 
tidy this up a bit. So we'll cancel the 4 here. So we'll get x to the power of 4 plus ax cubed plus what will we get here? We'll get a squared and then 6 over 16, which reduces down to 3 over 8. So we'll get 3 over 8 there, x squared. Plus, now let's do this one. One of the 4s will cancel, so we'll get a cubed over 16 there times x. And then finally, we'll get plus a to the power of 4 over 256, which is 4 to the power of 4, so 16 times 16. Okay, right. Now, why is that interesting at all? Why did I choose x plus a over 4 here? Well, the reason I hope should be plain, it's because these first two terms that I've got here, these are the perfect match for the first two terms here. Okay, that's why I'm even interested in this in the first place. Because when you expand x plus a over 4 to the power of 4, forget this m nonsense over here. Okay, the first two terms, the degree 4 and degree 3 terms, match up perfectly. Okay, so now what I can do is I'm going to rewrite my... Uh, cubic, sorry, my quartic equation in terms of x plus a over 4, like so. So I'll have x plus a over 4 to the power of 4, okay, and that will cover my first and second terms here, okay. Then I'll need plus some constant, which I might as well just call p, times x plus a over 4 to the power of 2. Now, how am I going to pick this p? Okay, I'm going to pick this p so that it works perfectly to get rid of this x squared term here and give us this x squared term here. So what I'm going to have to set p equal to is I'm going to have to set it equal to negative 3a squared over 8, okay, plus b, okay. Why? Because when you expand this out, you'll get x squared plus uh, a over 2x plus a squared over 16. Forget the later bits. All that I'm interested in is the x squared term. When I multiply it by the p, which is b minus 3a squared over 8, okay, I will get the bx squared correct, and then the negative 3a squared over 8x squared will cancel with the um, degree 2 term provided by this. Okay, so I pick p so that it now fixes the uh, degree 2 term correct. Okay, so what I've now done is I've picked p specially so that it now gives me this term correct. Okay, now the first degree term and the constant term will all be rubbish at the moment, so I'm going to have to fix them now if I want this to actually equal my uh, quartic up here. So what I'll then do is I'll pick my coefficient of the linear term in x plus a over 4 uh, very carefully so that it now makes the linear term here perfect. Okay, so what it will have to do is it will have to give us c, so we'll have q is equal to c, and then we'll have subtract off the linear term that you get from this one here, and then subtract off whatever the linear term from this one is. So it will be a monstrosity what q is equal to. But the point is that we are picking q so that it now fixes the linear term correctly. So this q is designed to make that correct, Okay, whereas the p was designed to make this bit correct. Okay, and this made the purple bit cracked. And then finally, we'll put on some constant term, which we'll call R. Okay, and this bit will be the bit that is designed to make, finally, uh, that constant term in our original quartic here correct. So it will take away all of the constant terms that all of these give, and then add on D, basically. Okay, so we can pick P, Q, and R very cleverly so that we can rewrite our quartic equation like so. Okay, now all we say is let's let y be equal to x over a over 4, and now we have our quartic equation of the form y cubed plus py squared plus qy plus r is equal to 0. So we've reduced our quartic equation problem down to having to solve a quartic equation of this form, basically. Okay, now, if I can find you, then, the solutions to this equation here, where p, q, and r are got in this very special way from the coefficients of our original uh, quartic equation, okay, so they're going to depend on a, b, c, and d, okay, for instance, I've got an explicit equation here for what p is equal to in terms of a and b, okay, I could, in principle, find you the explicit equations for 
Q&R, you might like to do that. It's a bit of a, a messy job, okay? They end up being hideous, okay? But it, it's not difficult to do, okay? It's just time-consuming and boring. Okay, right. Uh, so, what we have done is we've found this associated equation, and if I find you the four roots of this, then I can easily find you the four roots of my original problem, simply because the solutions to the original problem will be x values such that x plus a over 4 is a solution to this equation here. So if I find the four y values which satisfy this, then all I need to do basically is find x values such that x plus a over 4 is one of those solutions. So quite simply, all I need to do is subtract off a over 4 from all four of the solutions to this, and then I'll get x solutions that have to be solutions to my original problem. So that's why we can turn this problem into one of these associated problems, solve that, and then we get the solution for our original problem. Okay, so that's all lovely, that's all very simple. Uh, what we now need to do is solve this then, okay? So how are we going to do this? Well, uh, at first, I'm not going to outline exactly how we're going to do this, I'm just going to Firstly, do a bit of background, and then I'll explain exactly what we're aiming to do here. And hopefully it will then all come together and you'll understand what we're trying to do here. Okay, right. So this is the background. Let's just consider what y squared plus k squared is equal to. Okay, so let's just expand this out. This will give us y to the power of 4 plus 2k y squared plus k squared. Okay, nothing difficult there. All I've done is a uh, an expansion, a binomial expansion of that um, t uh, equation there, or that formula there, rather. Okay, now what I'm going to try and do is rewrite my quartic equation here so that it now includes this, basically, and you'll understand why later on. At the moment, just go along with it, and then you'll find the motivation later on, okay? By the way, I should say what k is equal to. k is just some arbitrary complex number that I have not yet chosen, okay? It's just a constant, basically, okay? But I haven't yet chosen it. I've got a bit of room to play there, and that's going to be really important later on once you see the motivation for what we're doing here. But for now, just go along with it and you'll find the motivation later on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my green equation here and I'm going to add on this portion here, the plus 2ky squared plus k squared onto both sides. Now when I do that, if I add it onto this side, what would I now have? I'll have y to the power of 4 from my original equation, and now I'll have plus 2ky squared plus k squared. So that means that I can now factorise that up into y squared plus k squared. Okay, and remember I haven't selected what k is, but it's what I'm doing now is true for any k value that you like, basically. Okay, so I'm just keeping it general at the moment. So what I'll end up with then is y squared plus k squared. That takes away this term, and it takes away the bit that I've just added on. And then you'll end up with the rest of this junk here. You'll end up with py squared plus qy plus r. And then on the other side now, you've got 2k y squared plus k squared. Okay, now take all of this stuff here. Okay, the py squared plus qy plus r, and move it onto the other side, and then what we'll get is that this is y squared plus k squared is equal to, now what we'll end up with is 2k minus p, okay, times y squared, then we'll end up with minus qy, and then we'll end up with plus k squared minus r, so that's our constant term now. Okay, so here's our coefficient of y squared, here is our coefficient of y, okay, and here is our constant term over here. Okay, right, so I still have not at the present selected what k is equal to. This is true whatever k value you want, basically. You can do this for any complex number you like. You can do it for i, you can do it for i plus 5, whatever you want, basically. This is true. Perfectly true. Okay, now here comes the big idea. This is the big idea. What if we could select k very carefully so that what we've got on this side is actually a perfect square? Okay, so one of those quadratics that we can express as y... Okay, so what do I mean by perfect square? I mean something that we can express, and I shouldn't use a. I'll turn that into an alpha. Alpha x plus beta, okay, squared. What if I could select k perfectly, so that this quadratic could be expressed as a perfect square like that. 
Okay, are there such K values that I could do that for? Because if there was, that would be absolutely brilliant. Because now I'd have this squared is equal to this squared. All I'd have to do is square root both sides, and then I'd get that Y squared plus K is equal to plus or minus, and that should be in Y. I apologize for that. That should be 